Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to start a weekend reading vlog. So I feel like I haven't done a reading vlog in such a long time because I was not able to do the mid-month book bash reading vlog, which I almost always do every month because I was ill on that particular weekend, had laryngitis. So I figured it's the last weekend in October. Um, I'm not really like doing a whole lot of active things other than I'm going to be home. I'm going to be doing some projects and we have a, um, a little family get together tomorrow, which will involve being out in the woods a little bit. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a reading vlog. And yesterday I actually went on a biblio adventure. Um, that's a term that the book cougars use. If you listen to the book cougars podcast, which I highly recommend, it's a great podcast. Um, and I, my mother and I traveled, about two hours away from here to go to a uh, library book sale. I've never been to this library book sale before, um, but Kim at Middle of the Book March inspired me to do some searching to see what book sales, uh, library book sales were available in my state. Found this one this weekend and I'm so glad that I went because it was amazing. It was so amazing. They had like brand new hardcovers and paperbacks and it was very, very cheap. I will show you um, some clips from yesterday, what we got up to. I didn't take any video at the library book sale. I just forgot. I got so excited. I forgot what I was doing, to tell you the truth. I was so excited by the book sale. But I will insert some photos of the books that I picked up. And all of those books I purchased for $20. I know. I know. It's amazing. So enjoy these video clips from Friday's Biblio Adventures. going to just be here at home doing housework and baking and hopefully getting some reading done. And what am I working on? I have some things that I would like to finish before the end of the month. So I have three days to do that. First of all, I am, let me take this uh, sticky off. I am buddy reading the September issue of The Atlantic with Britta and I have two articles left to read in this before we check in tomorrow. So I'll be doing that today. Um, and my other main focus for the weekend will be this book, In the Shadow of Man, um, by Jane Goodall. This is the Book Naturalist book club pick for the month of October. And I am 100 pages into this. It's about 300 pages long. And it reads really quickly. So I'm pretty confident I will finish that this weekend. I am also still reading The Witches by Stacey Schiff. This is Suspicion, Betrayal, and Hysteria in 1692 Salem. Um, this is a history nonfiction of all about the witch trials in Salem back before the United States was even a country in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Um, I am 275 pages into this. It's about 400 pages long. Um, and I really do want to finish this by the end of October. So before I get into nonfiction November, even though this is nonfiction, um, but I just feel like this is the perfect October spooky read. Um, and 
for nonfiction, um, and I just want to be able to complete this this month. So that's my other second main goal for reading. And then lastly, I am working on this biography, Theodore Rex by Edmund Morris. This is his second volume in his three volume biography of Teddy Roosevelt. And of course, this is the president that I'm currently on for my presidential reading challenge. I am on page 200 of this biography. I, I just love the way that Edmund Morris writes biography. It's so interesting. Teddy Roosevelt is like the most complex and interesting person. I really am enjoying learning all the details of his life. It's very detailed, but it's highly readable. I think if you're a person that stays away from biography because you feel it's dry and boring, I would encourage you to try Edmund Morris as an author because I think he really writes a lot of drama into his nonfiction. Not that he's making things up, but the way that he writes it um, makes it feel very engaging and propulsive. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that as well. But I don't, I do not anticipate finishing this by the end of October. This will definitely um, be uh, carrying over into November. This is, if I don't look at all the notes and all the stuff at the end, how long is this? I think it's about 500 pages long. Yeah, it's 550 pages long. So that's what I'm currently working on. I did just finish yesterday morning my second book for Victober, and that was The Eustace Diamonds by Anthony Trollope. I began reading that on my Kindle. It was an ebook. Um, and then I sort of went back and forth between the ebook and the audiobook. And I'm so thankful I looked up the audiobook because it is narrated by, let me look at my note, David Shaw Parker, and he is amazing. He does such a wonderful job narrating this audiobook. So The Eustace Diamonds is book three in the Pallister Chronicles or the Pallister series by Anthony Trollope. And this particular installment is about Lizzie Eustace, who is a young woman. She's a widow. Her, um, her husband was a lord from the Eustace family, and he they've only been married a short time period, and he dies and leaves her with an, an annual income, an estate in Scotland, and a diamond necklace valued at 10,000 pounds. And this diamond necklace is the centerpiece of this story because the estate, the lawyers for the estate, the Eustace estate, say that the necklace is not, in fact, Lizzie's to keep. It is an heirloom and is a part of the the greater estate and will go to the heir um, and it should be kept with the rest of the sort of estate valuables and not um, carried around by Lizzie. And Lizzie insists that her husband gave it to her and told her it was hers forever and it's hers. Um, and so that is the central focus of this story and what's going to happen with these diamonds. Um, Lizzie herself is a very conniving young woman and she is a very um, dislikable but yet very amusing character and the way that this book is written Anthony Trollope writes it with a lot of humor there are tons of characters in here there's sort of three guys that are vying for um, Lizzie's attentions as this rich young widow there's other sort of more pious women that are like oh Lizzie's bad and so you get to see all these different perspectives and you have your own feelings about which ones of these characters are actually bad um, and it's kind of a caper it's kind of a heist story um, and just at a very amusing romp and I would highly recommend the audiobook because David Shaw Parker does reads the book with a lot of um, he puts a lot of acting into it so there is you know he does different voices he does the emphasis on the comedic bits. He, you know, there's a lot of cliffhangers at the end of the, the different chapters. It is just, it's just a fabulous time. If you like Victorian literature and you like humorous Victorian literature, I really love Trollope for that. And I think The Eustace Diamonds is, I don't think that it's a book that you necessarily need to read the rest of the Pallister books for because it really is, like there were some characters that were connected to the earlier books, like Lady Glencora Pallister shows up, of course. Um, but it really reads as its own novel. It doesn't really, um, it kind of reads like it's outside of the other books in the series. So I really enjoyed um, The Eustace Diamonds and I'm glad that I read it for Victober. So that's what I'm up to, and I will continue to check in with you as the weekend goes on my progress.
Sunday night and um, my weekend did not go exactly as planned because it ended up that yesterday I was able to get my um, COVID booster shot and my flu shot. So today I've been experiencing a very uh, persistent headache um, and, you know, just achiness and whatnot in the body. But, you know, it is what it is, and it's better than getting really, really sick. So uh, I did manage to finish just in the last few minutes In the Straddle of Man by Jane Goodall, which is the book naturalist book club pick for the month of October. Uh, I won't talk about it a lot here in this vlog because I will be doing a separate individual review for this book, as I always do for the book naturalist books. But I will say that this was an incredibly charming account of Jane Goodall's early research in uh, Africa on chimpanzees. And because she was doing that research in the 1960s, you know, it's a much, much different world than what we are living in today. And how that research was conducted is much, much different than how things are done today. Um, how information was synthesized and the tools that were available for her to use. Very, very fascinating. I really, really enjoyed this. It's written in a very um, readable format. It's just, like I said, it's just charming. That's all I can say about it. So yeah, stay tuned for a uh, full length review on this one. I have done a little bit of reading as well in The Witches by Stacey Schiff. Um, probably read about 50 pages of that over the last couple of days. So I'm going to extend this vlog through tomorrow, um, which is October 31st, and see if I can finish The Witches at least, uh, and maybe something, read a little bit more of something else. And I will check in with that when I make any more progress, if I make any more progress. <music> November 1st and I figured I better close out this vlog. So I was successful in reading two more books on the 31st. So I did pretty well. I did finish The Witches by Stacey Schiff and this is a book Suspicion, Betrayal and Hysteria in 1692 Salem. So this is all about the Salem witch trials and it is incredibly detailed about the Salem witch trials. Uh, and it is over 400 pages long, the text part, not including the references at the end. And I will say that I found this book to be quite tedious in its detail, um, mostly because there were a lot of descriptions of what might have happened in the courtroom when different suspects were on trial for being witches. And some of it is speculation. Some of it is based on fragments of documentation that existed about the Salem witch trials. There were, there was a court recorder, but he evidently, um, was very loose with his interpretation of what was being said. It wasn't a straight word for word, uh, recording of what people said. It was more of his thoughts and feelings about what people were saying at the time. And I just found it incredibly tedious. I mean, for one thing, it's really hard to suspend your modern ideas about what 
um, courts should be like, which is not what courts were like in 1692 Salem, Massachusetts. I mean, remember that at that point, uh, Massachusetts was a colony of Great Britain and it was not, there was no United States at that time. Legal system was not developed. Um, the judges in these witch trial, these witch trials were, uh, oftentimes, um, just members like, uh, in, of high standing in the community. There were ministers who, uh, were served on the juries or on the, on the judges panel. Um, there was no, the, the people who were, being questioned on, you know, during the trial could like speak back to the people who were questioning them. People in the audience could, could make comments. They brought in these young women. They were teenagers who, these are the ones that said they were being persecuted by witches and they would have these fits right in the courtroom and they would accuse people and they would say things were happening that nobody else could see. They would claim that there were ghosts in the room that nobody else could see. And everybody just believed all this stuff because that was the way the world was at that time. But to your modern 21st century sensibility, it just seems like all a bunch of ridiculousness and that people were put to death for that ridiculousness is very frustrating. Um, but I did enjoy the parts that went into describing the actual society of the Puritans because this was this was a community of Puritans and how what it was like to live in that community at that time, what the what the things were that people were frightened of, um, how much more strongly they um, led their lives according to their religious beliefs than people do today um, in general. So that stuff was all interesting. It was very interesting to read about what the court system was like um, at the time, what the justice system and the criminal system was like at that time, what the jails were like at that time. All the historical detail I found really interesting, but the actual scenes that were described of the courtroom part, which makes up an incredibly large amount of this book, were just very, very tedious. So, um, this was just an average read for me. Unfortunately, I, this is probably, this is definitely my least favorite Stacey Schiff book to date. Uh, and probably just because, um, I just had a hard time shutting off my modern brain to read the accounts of what these people were claiming and believing. And I just, I just really had a very difficult time with it. So that was that, and a very good read for October, I think, is The Witches. And then finally, I finished There Is No Point of No Return by Arne Ness, who is a Norwegian uh, philosopher, uh, actually was a Norwegian philosopher. He passed away in 2009, and he uh, was one of the first people uh, to describe and be a proponent of deep ecology. This book is a collection of his writings from like 1986 to 2000, and then like a collection of his writings was published in 2016, of which some of the material in here was pulled from that. And it was really interesting, although the first part, the first few essays were very philosophical in nature, and then those were less interesting to me than the ones at the end, which were more about economics and how um, our current global economic system does not work uh, in terms of trying to maintain a sustainable world. And it was really interesting. It was a different, slightly different take than the other books in this series about the economy and the impacts of the economy on the environment. And I found that really, really interesting. So yeah, very worthwhile. I'd never heard of this author before, so I'm very glad to have been introduced to him um, in the course of reading the Penguin Green Ideas series. This is number 18. I only have one more to go to finish the collection. One thing I wanted to say before I close this vlog out um, is that I, on the, in the opening clip of this vlog, I think I talked about the Anthony Trollope book that I recently read and finished, and I really enjoyed that book, The Eustace Diamonds. And that is absolutely true, but I realized that I forgot to mention my one caveat about this book and about Anthony Trollope in general, and that is that he was very uh, anti-Semitic, and he um, he he is the bad guys in his books are very often Jewish people, and in the Eustace Diamonds, he was particularly egregious in this respect. Um, there were a couple of characters who were the quote unquote bad guys who were. Uh, depicted as being Jewish, and I just find those uh, parts of his books to be really um, gross. 
<laughs> and I mean, I know like we can all the, all the, you know, it was, he was writing during his own time and these are books from the Victorian period and it's not uncommon to find anti-Semitism in Victorian literature, but I it, just be warned that it's in there. And if it's something that truly is uh, a no go for you, probably steer clear of particularly the Eustace diamonds, because I think it's, it's really quite, quite, um, um, overt in this one in a way that it isn't in in some of the other Trollope books that I've read. So I just wanted to put that out there, particularly in light of recent events um, with celebrities being anti-Semitic, uh, that, you know, that may be something that you have even less tolerance for than before in your Victorian literature. So be, be warned. Anyway, it's been great um, to have a reading vlog to focus on this weekend, this past weekend. I'm hoping to do some more reading vlogs in the month of November as I read through my nonfiction November list. So hopefully we'll see you soon in a future video and hope you're all finding some great books to read. I'll talk to you later.